Open Sourcing Pangora, our Rust framework for building programmable network interfaces. This is Cloudflare. Today, we are proud to open source Pangora, the Rust framework we have been using to build services that power a significant portion of traffic on Cloudflare. Pangora is released under the Apache license version 2. As mentioned in our previous blog post, Pangora is a Rust async multi-threaded framework that assists us in constructing HTTP proxy services. Since our last blog post, Pangora has handled nearly a quadrillion internet requests across our global network. That's a lot of that's that's a lot of requests. Okay, that's uh that's a lot of requests. Holy cow! Uh, we are open sourcing Pingora to help build better and more secure internet beyond our own infrastructure. We want to provide tools, ideas, and inspiration to our customers, users, and others to build their own internet infrastructure using a memory safe framework. Having such a framework is especially critical given the increased awareness of the importance of memory safety across the industry, including the U.S. government. Joe Biden is a frustration. It's been fact. It's a fact of life. Okay, it's a fact of life. Uh, under the common goal, we are collaborating with the Internet uh, Security Research Group uh, and Prosimo Project to help advance the adoption of Pingora, the Internet's most critical infrastructure. Biden, an actual crab. Actual crab laying advocate. In the previous post, we discussed why and how we built Pingora. In this one, we'll talk about why and how you might use Pingora. Okay, nice. Pingora provides building blocks not only for proxies, but also clients and servers. Along with these uh, components, we provide a few utility libraries that implement common logic such as event counting, uh, error handling, and caching. Okay, so what's in the box? It's kind of exciting. I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, Pingora provides libraries and APIs to build services on top of HTTP 1, 2, uh, TLS, TCP, UDP. Where's 3? Where's 3? Uh, as a proxy, it supports HTTP 1 and 2, end-to-end, -end, gRPC, and WebSocket proxying. HTTP 3 support is on the roadmap. HTTP 3 is hard. Uh, it also comes with customizable load balancing and failover strategies. For compliance and security, it supports both the commonly used OpenSSL and Boring SSL libraries, which come uh, with FIPS compliance and post-quantum crypto. Post-quantum crypto sounds so amazing. Is that just elliptical curve? Is that post-quantum? Uh, read the event counting article. It's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read event counting article at this current moment, but this does sound exciting. Uh, besides providing these features, Pingoda provides filters and callbacks to, uh, to allow its users to fully customize how the service should process, transform, and forward the requests. These APIs will be especially familiar to Open, Resty, and Nginx users. Some people call it Nginx, and those people are wrong. When I heard that, I was like, am I saying it wrong? I thought it was Nginx, and then someone, then I heard somebody walk by me like, Nginx, and I was like, I, uh, well, dang. I guess, I, <laughs> I guess I'm a dummy this whole time. Dude, don't you hate when you say something, and then you realize that you're just, you're just, it just, it just hurts. It just hurts. Senior dev people, uh, they say how to pronounce it in their website. Okay, so it is Nginx. I'm glad it's Nginx because that makes me feel better that I've been correct. Uh, the many uh, map intuitively into open resties uh, by Lua callbacks. Ooh, Lua mentioned, Brazil mentioned, Brazil mentioned. Operationally, Pingata provides zero downtime, gracefully restarts to upgrade itself without dropping a single incoming request. Syslog, Prometheus, Sentry, Open Telemetry, and other must have observability tools are also easily integrated into Bingata as well. Dude, love it. Brazil mentioned. Also, Sentry Open Telemetry. Fantastic. That's pretty cool. Uh, who can benefit from Bingata? You should consider it if security is your top priority. <laughs> who has security as like a top priority? That kind of sounds fake news. Pingota is more memory safe alternative for services that are written in C and C++. Um, is that permanently true? So it's a bold statement to make. Do you think that there can be a perfectly memory safe C++ application? I don't know. I assume so. Uh, memory safe, fearless concurrency. Uh, anyways, while some might argue about memory safety among programming languages, from our practical experience, we find ourselves way less likely to make coding mistakes that lead to memory safety issues. Besides, we spend less time struggling with these issues. We are more productive implementing new features. Fair. Uh, your service is performance sensitive. Pingata is fast and efficient. As explained in our previous blog post, we save a lot of CPU and memory resources thanks to Pingata's multi-threaded architecture. The saving in time and resources could be compelling for workloads that are sensitive to the cost and or speed of your system. Okay, I like that. Your request, uh, your service requires extensive customization. The APIs, uh, 
that the Pingora proxy framework provides are highly programmable. For users who wish to build a customized and advanced gateway or load balancer, Pingora provides powerful yet simple ways to implement it. That's super cool. Okay, that's, this is actually super cool because I've always wanted to play around. I like, like I said earlier, I've never built a proxy myself. I've never done any of these things. I've never built a, a, a load balancer, a custom one. I've never done any of those things. So it would be a lot of fun. Man, see, there's just so much things I want to do and not enough time of the day because I got to go I gotta go back to work soon. Uh, let's explore Pingora Programmable uh, API by building a simple load balancer. The load balancer will select between 11111 and 1001 to be the upstream in a round-robin fashion. Okay, cool. We should be able to follow this pretty easy. First, let's create a blank HTTP proxy. All right, we have a struct load balancer. We have an async trait, uh, impl proxy load balancer, async function upstream peer result, in, uh, result box HTTP peer. Damn, it's a box HTTP peer. Let's go to do any object that implements the http proxy trait similar to the concept of interface in c++ or java is an HTTP, http proxy okay the only required oh, i wanted to know what what are the arguments coming in here and wait hold on is this a trait oh no this is the trait i was like wait a second is this the trait no peer peer must be the it must be a concrete object of some sort uh the only or no it's not it could be since it's in a box, it could also be a trait, right? The only required method, uh, oh, it had to be dine. Never mind. It has to be dine. Sorry, I haven't, I haven't played around with box traits in a long time. The only required method there is upstream peer, which is called every request. This function should return an HTTP peer, which contains the orig origin IP to connect to and how to connect to it. Next, let's implement the round robin selection. The Pangora framework already provides a load balancer, which is a common selection algorithm, such as round robin and hashing. So let's just use it. If the use case requires more sophisticated or customized server selection logic, users can simply implement it themselves in this function. Oh, very cool. This is actually super cool. All right. Let upstream equals self zero select uh, no by 256. The hash doesn't matter with round robin. Okay. Uh, unwrap. Okay. We get this. We get that. Uh, the SNE one to one to one to one. To one. Uh, let peer equals this new upstream as one to one to one to one to one to one. One to one to one to one to one. One to one to one to one to one. Return this. Okay. Since we are connecting uh, to an HPS server, the SNE is, oh, let's see, also needs to be set. Certification, timeouts, and other connection options can also be set here in the HTTP peer object if needed. Finally, let's put the service in action. In this example, we hard code the or, uh, origin server IPs. In real life workloads, the origin IPs can also be discovered dynamically when the upstream peer is called or in the background. Uh, after the service is created, just tell the load balancer to listen to this. And in the end, we created the Pangora server. And the server will be, pro let's see, will be the process which runs the load balancing server. Okay, that's pretty cool. We do this one. Try it from these two ones right here. Let mute Pangora proxy, HP proxy, server configuration, upstreams, add this TCP, equal a new server, my server, add service, run forever. It's pretty cool. So any of your structs can become load balancers by simply implementing the HTTP proxy and just having this uh, upstream peer re uh, returning this out. Okay. That's pretty cool. And then I assume the server underneath does the new requesting and all that run uh, forever. Very optimistic. <laughs> dad, run forever. Uh, that's, camel, uh, that's camel case, and we don't do that around here. Okay, your dad sucks. I just want to let you know that now. Let's try it out. So we do this little curl right here. We can see that the proxy is working, but the origin server rejects us with a 403. This is because our server, our service simply proxies the host header, uh, this, set by the curl, which uh, upsets the origin server. How do we make the proxy uh, correct that? This can simply be done by adding another filter called upstream request filter. This filter runs on every request after the origin server is connected and before any HTTP request is sent. We can add, remove, and change HTTP request headers in this filter. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we get the ability to play around with headers and hook into. Oh, very cool. There we go. Very cool. We curl it, and we get, oh, wow. This time it works. The complete example can be found here. Okay, below is a very simple diagram of how this request flows through the callback and filter we used in this example. Pangora Proxy Framework currently provides more filters and callbacks at different stages of the request to allow users to modify, reject, route, and or log requests. Very cool. So you get the upstream peer, you filter out stuff, slash update it, and then you get to do this. That is cool. That's really, really cool. Let's look at the code for a quick second. All right, so here's our load balancer. That's oh, arc, arc incoming. Uh, we get this. We get a type context. Oh, my goodness. We're getting some gats going on here. Uh, upstream peer. We do all this one, self-session. This is why, by the way, they, they hit a lot of it. Uh, 
you just couldn't you couldn't handle the amount of symbols going on here. They don't want people to actually see this. Okay, so we do this little random selection. We do this. Awesome. We do our filter, which insert header host one to one 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 one. Awesome. We do our main uh, server args. We do all this. We create our load balancer from these two hard coded places right here, or actually three hard coded places right here, including a three four three. Interesting. Um, we have a little health check frequency. Oh, nice. We have little health checks. Cool. We had a health check at the background so that a bad server is never selected. Oh, that's super cool. I didn't realize you could do that. Upstreams. Nice. You can even, oh, nice. Uh, that's cool. Uh, background service, health check, upstreams, uh, upstreams, background task. Okay. Uh, load balancer, Pangora, this upstreams. Let's go, let's do this cert path. Get all the cert paths. Oh, cool. Add service, uh, load balancer, add service, background, run forever. That's pretty dang cool. I mean, I know this would turn out to be like way more complicated if you actually did anything yourself. And this is a very trivial example, but still, it's pretty dang cool. This is pretty dang cool. Especially since it's all, you know, it's all Cloudflare. And, and, and can we be real for a second? Like out of all of this stuff, if I were to trust anybody to build this correctly, I would, I would, I would trust very much Cloudflare to do a good job. Can we all agree to that? Cloudflare probably does some seriously good stuff. Type masturbation. Oh yeah, I could feel it. I could definitely feel it coming in. Yes, I see one person saying nope. Sounds like you have a lot of confidence in yourself. Okay, uh, Lapolo, why not? Hit me, hit me. Come on, come on, hit me. You're on the big board now. You're on the big board. Come on. You got two thousand people on the dot, waiting, yearning, desiring to see what you have to say. I just don't like Cloudflare. <laughs> Can't argue. Good take. Hey, good take. We'll we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll, we'll we'll be fine with that. I mean, honestly, you just owned me with facts and logic, so I actually have nothing to say at this point. Open source, present, and future. The Pagoda is a library and a tool set, not an executable binary. Just give me an exe. Smelly nerds! In other words, Pangora is an engine that powers a car, not the car itself. Although Pangora is production ready for industry use, we understand a lot of folks want a batteries included, ready to go web service with low or no code config options. Building that application on top of Pangora will be the focus of our collaboration with the ISRG to expand Pangora's reach. Stay tuned for the. Uh, I'm sure, dude. You, I'm sure the moment you open source this, there's already like. There's already 15 sweaty nerds coming up with yet another framework. We're going to have Axum, Actix, Rocket, and Pangora Axum. Pangora, uh, Pangorix, right? Some some extra thing. We're going to have it. Nitpicks all over the PRs. It's going to be wild. Uh, how to contribute. Feel free to raise a bug reports, documentation issues, and feature requests in our GitHub issue tracker. Okay, awesome. Conclusion. Uh, let's see. In this blog, we announced the open source of our Pangora framework. Thank you for telling me what I just got done reading. Isn't it always strange when people do phrases like this? Like, thank you for watching. I just got done telling you about X. You're like, yes, you did. You sure did. You did. You did that. Thank you for that. Uh, we showed the internet uh, the, that internet entities and infrastructure can benefit from Pangoda's security, performance, and customability. We also demonstrated how easy it is to use Pangoda. And okay, I don't care at this point. Blah, 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 blah. This was super cool, though. It was very cool to see how simple it was to create this. I still need to actually do this, and I'm sure there's a day where I'm going to build my own load balancer, and then I'll build a couple load balancers, and I'll be all super excited about load balancers and proxies and all these things, and I'll know exactly how they work. Because right now, they're just a bunch of there's they're just a bunch of squares in my head and so it'd be very 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 nice to have like it not as squares but as actual concrete stuff and so it sounds like this would be a lot of fun to look at dang yet another thing on my list another thing on my list just because uh, just use axum and hyper it, it works and it's well maintained uh, axum is very nice actix is all, also very nice right I, I i like that i like it Load balancers are just something you add uh, to your uh, K8s. Uh, did you know that uh, K8s, if you drop the S and you make it into a K9, you get yourself a dog. K8s equals K9 equals a dog. It's math. Go ahead. Try to disprove me. Try. Try to disprove me. You can't. Anyways, this is super cool. Oh, man, I want to play with all this stuff. All right, anyways. Oh, man, there's so much stuff I want to play with. The problem is, is that, like, I have no opportunity to use Nef uh, Rust at Netflix in any sort of realistic way. So I've just kind of given up the fight. I want Honestly, I just want to use Go at this point. But even that is just, like, so hard to do other than certain teams. I was Go adjacent for a long time, but it's, like, so hard to use it 
You know what I mean? Java forever. It's actually Node. Everyone wants to use Node, and I think they're all wrong. But I don't get choices on that. The name is I get to write Node, but I use JS Doc in my projects, and and on the projects that I don't use JS Doc, uh, there's like eight eight second, ten second, and one of them is like a ten minute build process. It, it's emotionally painful. I think we should just use JS Doc, man. Man, just use JS Doc. Get over yourself. Stop using TypeScript. Stop. I hate your build systems. Again.